Hi, this is my first Blender tutorial. Now, I'm assuming you already have some knowledge with the program, so yeah, just know that before we start. Okay, so it's pretty easy. What we're going to do is press Shift A to add some text. Now, I need to edit the text by pressing Tab to go into edit mode. Call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it example. Enter. Oop. Press Tab to go out again. Now we need to rotate this so it's facing the right way, so I'm going to do that by pressing R and then rotating on the x-axis, so I'll press X and the amount will be 90, so I'll type 90 in and press Enter. There you go. Now we need to add some depth to it, but I don't recommend changing the extrude value because that's going to have some problems with it. Just trust me. So the easiest way to do this is to convert this to a mesh by going Object, Convert, Mesh. Okay, so now it should be a mesh. Press tab to go into edit mode and press all, and this is how we'll extrude it. We'll just literally go into edit mode, press A to select all, and then press E to extrude. Just like that. That's what I want to do. Now you can try beveling it, but it's going to be pretty hard because this is horrible topology. And just, yeah. Control B, no. <laughs> it's horrible. Okay. The next step is to make this actually fall and interact with physics. And the way we're going to do this is first we need to separate all these letters into individual objects. And we can do this in edit mode by selecting all and pressing P and then clicking by loose parts. And Blender will automatically make everything its own object. Just like that. Now all of these have a weird origin. And we can fix this by just pressing A pressing object, set origin, origin to geometry, and that'll solve any future problems with the rotation. Now we need to add the physics. The fastest way to do this is to select a single object, going into the physics section, and pressing rigid body. Now you can set any settings you want in here, but I recommend just keeping Covex whole because it'll be nicer to your computer. And surface response, I like mine to be fairly bouncy, so make it nice and bouncy, and turn down the friction to make it a little bit slippery. Okay. Makes them look a bit more, like, plastic. Okay. Now, we need to select all of the other letters now, so we can apply this. So hold down shift, box select all the other letters, and the letter you applied all the settings to should be orange, and the rest should be red. Now, to transfer all the rigid body settings, we're going to go Object, Rigid Body, and then Copy from Active. This should copy all the settings across. Now, we need to add an actual surface for them to fall onto, so I'm going to press Shift A and add a plane, and I'm going to scale it up by pressing S. You can select all these letters here. Move them up a little bit, just move them to the position that you want them to be in. Super simple, okay. Now, this will be important for later if you want the letters after falling down and falling apart, if you want them to materialize into the word again, this step is very important. So press I to insert a new keyframe. Make sure your mouse is hovering in the main 3D viewport window and not down here. Press I and select location and rotation. Not just location, not just rotation. Location and rotation. Scale doesn't really matter. Okay. Now this keyframe, we can move it up a little bit and just keep it there. Okay. When we press the space bar, actually no, don't do that. Yeah. When we press the space bar, it's just going to fall through because we have not given any settings to this thing here. You can use shift left and right arrow keys to skip to the end or the beginning of the timeline. So I'm going to give it a rigid body and make sure this type is set to passive so it does not fall but it still interacts. And when we press the space bar to play, that happens. I want it to start a little bit higher so I'm going to select them all, press G, and then move it along the Z axis by pressing Z, or Z if you're American. And yeah, it'll start up there. Now when I press the space bar, it falls down from a greater height, and you have to set it as a keyframe. That's very important. <laughs> I forgot to do that. Insert a location and rotation keyframe, just like so. Great. 
Now, we need to bake this. We're just going to press play and just stop it when they all stop moving pretty much. Or slow down a lot. There, I like that. And we can bake them by pressing F3 or holding down Fn and pressing F3 if that doesn't work. And type in rigid body and click bake to keyframes. And I'm going to go with 95 as the end point. Press OK. That's baked keyframes now. Now we can move this keyframe that we already created about 20 frames afterwards, or 10 frames, whatever you want. Okay. Now, when it falls and breaks, it'll just materialize, just like that. It looks a little bit weird, so yeah, this step is optional, but I like to make it look a little bit better by going to the animation tab or just opening a new graph editor window. That looks really weird, okay. <laughs> and yeah, make sure that keyframe is selected, it's important. Just make sure you select these two keyframes. And then in the graph editor, press T to change the interpolation. And just play around with whatever you want. Elastic looks kind of funny. It's it's pretty weird. It goes like this. <laughs> but I don't think it's really useful here. Try this one. Just go with whatever you want. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with maybe exponential. Yeah, looks a bit weird, but yeah, just keep playing around with them. Bezier, looks like this. That's the one I use normally. And this is optional as well, but there's a cool little thing you can do with one of the letters. Just pick one letter, or however many you want, actually. I'm going to go with the E, because it works nicely. And the E, we're just going to go to one of the keyframes and just mess around with some of these. Because it gives it a pretty cool little effect. That doesn't look so good. I'm not going to change that one. Not too much, anyway. Yeah, just change it around. Yeah, it just looks a little more interesting, you know? Yeah. Whoop. Okay, great. Now, uh, something, that's pretty much it, but you can make it look a bit nicer by doing the following. So you can edit the plane here, press 2 on your number pad or click up here. Select the back edge and extrude it along the Z axis. Now select this edge here and bevel it with Control B. Just like that, about that much. And go into the bevel settings here. Change the seg turn up segments and it gives you this really nice rounded edge. I'm going to make it a bit longer by pressing S for scale and then X for the X axis. And there we go. Now the problem is when you render, it's going to turn out really dark because there are no lights in the scene. You can simply change this by going, adding a light with Shift A, light, and point. And just move it around to wherever you want. Yeah, okay. Uh, the amount of light I'm going to do is 1000 watts. See how that looks in render view. It's all right. And then I'm also going to add an area lamp because they just look nice as well. Make it nice and big to give it a nice studio lighting effect. And make sure it doesn't clip with any of the walls as well. That's what I recommend. I apologize if I'm not very good at this tutorial. I'm not really great at tutorials. Never really done them before. But yeah, I like that. Okay. Now, to add the same material to all of your letters, what you can do is under the Materials tab, create a new material in one of them, and then select another one with Shift and click or box select, whatever you want. Just make sure the one you added the material to is the one that is orange, so the last one you selected. To link the materials, you press Control L and then Link Materials. Now, they should all just change at once. There you go. Uh, I'm going to give mine a bit of a sort of metallic look. Nice, sort of shiny metallic look. Yeah. Okay. 
see how that looks. And it materializes again. Nice. Uh, yeah, final touches. Add material to the background as well. Make it a nice pastel color. That's what I like to do. Yeah. And to render, you're gonna need a camera. So yeah, that's that's important. I'll make this a bit more metallic and shiny. Just like that. You might want to change around the lighting arrangement just to make it look nicer, if possible. Just like so. Yeah, I like that. Okay, we need to add a camera to actually render it. So press Shift A, camera. Press zero on your number pad if you have one, or just click this icon to see the camera's view. And yeah, you can just change the camera view with these settings, but I have a plugin enabled that allows me to see. I've forgotten what it's called, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Something I like to do is to add a little bit of um, depth of field. So tick depth of field and make sure uh, one of the letters is in focus. Turn down your f-stops to make it more shallow. I'm going to move a bit closer to have really subtle effects a bit more. Yeah, there you go. It's a bit more miniature. I like that. If you select the Cycles render engine, it'll look nicer generally, uh, but it increases your render times a lot. So in Eevee, I just like to tick all of these to get every single render setting turned on. And there you go. Render as you please. Okay, that's pretty much it. Sorry if it was not helpful, but yeah, hope you learned something.